Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 27th May. Fantastic day if you got your trades right and a disastrous day if the trades were not as you expected. I was actually expecting Friday to end the way it ended today. There was a good sized meltdown in the last 30 minutes. Most large stocks gave up most of the gains for the day in double quick time. Nifty closing 22,933.11% down for the day does not mean anything. The day was all about volatile movements that took good sized ones up, down, up, continuous movement. Last few days I was getting caught the movement in the last half an hour, one hour. Today thankfully it was in my favor. We'll talk about it. VIX nearly started the day 5-6% up and most of the day it stayed up only. This value is gonna go up only in the next few days. It will probably peak when the exit polls start. Gold after correcting a bit was up 71, 720. Brent slightly up as well. Bitcoin does not seem to be the flavor of the month right now. Most of the coins align with Donald Trump and his court trial right now. They are on fire. FIDI data, if you look at the net value, there is nothing there. However, large size buys, large size sells. Most people are discounting these numbers. I strongly feel FIIs are minting 3 to 4% every day. The difference is the profit that they are taking away and reinvesting the same amount every day. I don't know if DIs are on election duty or they have no idea what FIIs are doing, but these numbers are actually being sponsored by retail. People like you and me who invest by SIPs are losing something like 500 to 1000 crore of this amount every day. This probably is our additional contribution to the national elections. Watch the graph of Reliance today. Down, nearly went to 29.30 which is roughly 40 point cut. Then it went up again to 29.60, consolidate a bit, came down towards the end. However, look at the volatility in Reliance. I myself saw that Reliance went from minus 0.8% to green zone and then ended in 0.9% zone. It is 1% move down, up, down. Most traders get killed in this kind of movement, especially because movement of Reliance also decides the movement of Nifty to a very large extent, especially when TCS is just moving 0.1%, ICS is moving just 0.2%. It is Reliance which drives the Nifty levels. Same if you look at TCS, up, consolidate a bit, down a little, down a lot. The comical part is after moving so much, TCS closed with just 0.1% down. US markets are doing okay, all green mostly. Amazon minus 0.2% means nothing. SP and NASDAQ are creating new highs every day, just like Nifty, Sensex creating new highs every day. Nifty closed below 23,000. However, it did make an all time high in the morning itself. Sensex 2 created a new high. This is like a cricketer who has crossed 200 for the first time. Every run they score will be a new all time high only. Few quick updates, Goldman Sachs has revised India's GDP forecast specifically based upon the RBI's dividend bonanza. There is a video I'll release later today or tomorrow which will cover this topic on government spending, how RBI dividend bonanza will help along with four more such factors. I am not sure what IMD is doing. Is it actually rainfall or they are trying to create some positivity ahead of the results of the elections because till about a month back they were talking about El Nino. Now they are saying normal to above normal rainfall. I read it earlier today that most countries which deal with heat waves, they are actually considering temperature plus humidity combined to decide how hot it really is. IMD has no plans to change how they have been reporting this data for last 50-60 years. They will continue to report just the temperature while we all know that 40 degree on a hot and humid day is lot worse than 44 degree on a dry day. So if government probably needs to privatize, then they should privatize IMD first. This will do a lot of good to the country. BNP Paribas has said that the earnings growth in Nifty will be low to mid-teens. I've been saying that in most of my result analysis that the numbers this time are going to be low only because we are comparing to the high base of last year. This year will be a problem. Next year we'll get a benefit out of it. Goldman Sachs has given a very good review of NTPC's performance. This is available on investing.com and investing.in. Do read it if you want. Fantastic overview of NTPC's capacity expansion, especially on the renewable side, as well as what they are doing in the nuclear power part. Very good read. Sector snapshot really gives a bad picture today. Only 14 out of 36 sectors were green. Aerospace and defense had a rare red day. Out of nine previous days, aerospace and defense had the first red day today. Automobile, Maruti, Tata, Mahindra, all of them were red. Banking did lot better. Coal India down. Construction engineering sector is perhaps gearing up for the elections. RVNL and LNT both get considerable orders if there is pending in the construction engineering space. So does IRB Infra, which specializes in 
road building. Construction materials, primarily the cement pack, came under severe pressure. Containers and packaging completely red. Diversified industrial, primarily Adani Enterprises, 3% down. Biggest cut was in food and drug retailing. Demart, that's a big stock, 3% down. Let's check metal and mining. Hindustan Zinc is now in the correction mode, 5% down. I personally have a feeling that if the indices don't crack and we continue to have a bull run, then it is going to be the turn of steel very soon, specifically Tata Steel. Oil and gas, big cuts in Reliance and ONGC. Let's check Nifty 50, good volumes on most stocks. Let's sort on change just to double check. Yeah, Adani, Wipro, Grasim, ONGC, SBI down. TV's Lab, Indescent, Axis Bank, Adani Ports, LTI, all these were up. 17 stocks, which is nearly a third of the indice, is in 90% or above zone. Next 50, 33 stocks down, 17 stocks up. Those two shallow volumes. What was up? Madarson Sumi, PNB, Bosch, Dabur, Torrent Pharma, Pedilite. The down trail was pretty long. T-Mart, ICIC, Lombard, United Spirits, Zydus. Nokri, Adani, Wilmer. Third stocks in 90 to 100% zone and a fourth stocks in 80 to 90% zone. This indice is still in good shape. IT TCS went nowhere. Wipro was down. Rest of the sector was doing pretty well. Persistent was up 5% today. This is a long term portfolio stock for me. Nifty Energy was bleeding today. No place to hide literally. NTPC, I don't know why the market didn't like the results. If it cracks further, I'll probably add a bit to my long-term portfolio. I already have Tata Power in my long-term portfolio. Bank indices, minor cut in ICICI, otherwise banks were doing well. Public sector banks also, all green. Indian Overseas Bank, 11%. UCO Bank, 7%. How is my portfolio doing? Lot of changes today. Need to fix this. I sold half the quantity of Mass Financial. Now I have 2000 left. So this loss will be 19,000. I sold RVNL, Bharat Dynamics, Bikaji. I bought Bikaji just for trading based upon its good results. Idea which I had thought I'll sell at about 18, 19 levels. Booked losses in Mass Financial. I wanted to be a bit on cash. JM Financial also, I booked losses. It was up 5%, but it had been in loss for a significant time. Just holding my cash. Idea the 10,000 which got sold were the initial 10,000 which are bought a lot cheaper at 13. The trading one was bought at 14. The total profit out of these trades is 71k. However, that is not the complete picture. Let me go to the options trade. Just before the mini crash that happened at around 3 o'clock, this number was bleeding at around 60,000 loss. I had mentioned on Friday that I'll be doing a bit of rescuing on this. All these positions were sold at loss earlier today. This is in addition to minus 30,000 loss booked last week. But this time I stood by my conviction. I held on to the lots in this particular trade which was 22,800 levels. One crazy thing I did was I nearly scored a century. This is just 16 lots. At the peak today, I had 96 lots of Nifty, 22,800p. 96 lots. That is what helped me recover about 60,000 loss. And this turned green. Effectively, there's a minor loss because I bought back 16 lots towards the end. This is for tomorrow. Our fantastic recovery. So if we account for that 30,000 loss from FNO booked last week, effectively today's profit is around 40k. Let's see if we can do a bit of recovery of this loss on the trade that I have taken today for tomorrow. This is again a short position only. Let's jump to yesterday's question. I talked about copper and zinc. This is one year graph of copper international prices. Kind of stationary and then went up. Minor correction in the last 10-15 days. Copper prices, more or less stationary, went up, minor correction recently. Same trend. Let's check zinc. Flat line till April, nearly flat line till April. Range bound between 24 to 2600 levels. Sudden spike up, off late, minor correction. Sudden spike up, off late, minor correction. I'll give you two more examples. There's not an anomaly or a special case. Sodash, the second largest company in India is DCW. The first one is Tata Chemical. Around September, a big spike, a recovery, November. Till December, up. Till May, down. And now going up a bit. This particular trend, July 1, went up till about September. Correction till November. Went up again. This didn't stop in December, went on till a bit of January. Here it was consolidating. Then it fell till about March and April, which is this level. Then went up again. 
which is the same line. The final one, rubber, it might have an opportunity. There is a spike or a peak in March. There is a peak in March, a tail, a tail till about December, till about December, a fall, a fall. After that, though there is a boom in the auto market, this stock has been going down. I have not done the research if there is any reason for this. However, international market rubber prices are already going up around these same levels. Going by that trend, the stock might be headed towards 3000 again very soon. I don't know whether this will happen or not. This is the reading based upon international commodity prices. Significant rubber is imported and C8 is among the bigger players in India. The Tata Steel video is still due on me. I am going to work on it next. There was an interesting concept that came up over the weekend. I have created an Excel based model which helps predict what kind of sectors will do well or which will not do well based upon the election outcome and your investment levels, whether you invested say 90%, 50%, 20%. I also provide an Excel so you can download and customize. Our views could be different, but the idea is to take an objective decision, not a subjective one based upon our political preferences. The video will release later today or tomorrow. Do watch out for it. Have a fantastic remaining day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.